Hey guys, it's me Tiffany from Bless Bears. I am a mother of nine, or a family of 11. It's just so perfect with the timing of this video because I'm gonna talk about mommy self-care. And this is a collab. It is with Anna from Just Making It Work. She's been a great, lovely friend of mine. I talk to her all the time. And she just has great things on her channel like gistical, like tips and tricks, how to organize and, and, and things like that. So please make sure that you check out her channel. Also put um, the playlist in the description box below so you guys can listen to the other moms and what they think and how they take care of their cell. Um, since we're all different people, we have different viewpoints on this. So I have some notes here. We'll just get right down to it. Again, this is perfect timing because I'm having kind of a rough week. Here's one thing that I've noticed. Like I will find something that works. Like it could be a product or it could be like a schedule or whatever. And it's like, it's going so good and I use it and we implement it and then something happens in life and it just halts whatever and it's like either we forget about it or we give up or I don't even know there's so many reasons why we like stop doing what's good this video might be a really good just reminder video to you moms who have done these things before but sometimes we need to just kind of be reminded like oh I haven't done that in a while and when I used to do that it did help so I'm kind of going to be giving you some of tips or life experience things that has helped me so self-care to me it's like a three-way thing and if you see ink on me I just got done cleaning up my kids put food dye on my table back here and I was wiping it so anyways yeah it's been lovely okay and you also will probably hear some beautiful music in the background my oldest son is playing the piano so just overlook that you gotta do what you gotta do so self-care we live in this really selfish world. The iPhone and me this and Facebook and look at me and how many likes can I get and how many followers can I get and yada yada. You know how it is. And it's so hard because we see so much ugly that we don't want to be anything like those super selfish people, right? And as Christians and as moms, we know that it's true that when you sacrifice and you give that, you know, that's what God did for us. It makes you feel good to sacrifice and give things up and go help people and do all of those things, right? That is wonderful and good, but, but I'm here to remind you that there are some things that we need to do and we need to keep doing to keep our batteries recharged or our pitchers filled up so we can keep pouring into other people and helping our husbands, our children, making all those meals, talking to people, outreach. I understand because I have thrown a lot of things onto my plate. As I already said, I have nine kids, which is a lot. We homeschool them. And my husband and I, a year ago, in October 2021, started our own heating and cooling company. So he not only does heating and cooling, he also has another job. And it has been one of the most stressful, difficult years of our life. We had four uh, miscarriages in like an 18 month span. So as far as like stress and like remind myself, like this is the things that you have to do, Tiffany. And I've been slowly doing them and I'm coming like out of the pit of despair and so many great things have happened. So I wanna share those things with you. So anyways, like I was saying, there's three aspects of self-care, okay? And again, it doesn't mean because you take care of yourself that you are selfish. There is a small bit of us that we have to have some bit of selfishness, like, have you ever flown on an airplane? What do they tell you? They're like parents, if you have a child with you, you put your oxygen mask on you first before you do the kids. Why is that? Because we're adults. We have little people, husbands, whoever, that need us. And if we go down and we don't have enough oxygen, we can't move around and do the things and help the other people. That is what I'm talking about. So I'm not saying that this is our excuse to just be selfish and be like the world, but there are things that we have to do, get out of survival mode and start heading on to thrive. And this might be jumbled. I did notes, but we'll just see how this goes. If you're truly doing self-care in a godly way, you're gonna be honoring yourself, your body that God made. He said our body is a temple. Um, so we have to take care of ourselves. And I am gonna like, this might shock a lot of people, but I'm gonna go and say that our physical part of our body needs to be cared for in order for even our spiritual part to be really strengthened. And I know that might sound like crazy and like, what are you taught? Like, what do you mean? Like it's physical comes before spiritual. I don't mean that really, but I mean, we have to have our body in good working order to even feel like praying. Like I've been through where I've been so sick and yes, I've prayed through feeling bad. And yes, we call on God even when we feel bad. But if there are some physical things that we can do to help our body, because right now that's where we're at, we're in this body, then it helps you to be more spiritually sound. It helps you to want to actually go and, you know, get your strength and 
grab your Bible and, and you know what I mean? So hopefully you know where my heart is coming from when I start talking about these physical things first. Spiritual, physical, logistical, okay? First part, physical, like I said. Last May, I had like hit the like final, like I don't know, the, the straw that broke the camel's back or whatever. I had been going through a lot of things. Like I told you, I had a really stressful year. So many different things pulling at me and like depleting me. And I was having some stomach issues and just so many like hormonal issues. My hair was falling out. Thyroid was going crazy. I mean, I had so many things going wrong with me and God's hand has been on me the whole time. And he introduced me to a product um, called Purium. And so anyway, so in May, because of a friend who like was going through like really bad things and could only eat like seven foods. And then all of a sudden I see her like looking near death. And then like a couple months later, she's vibrant. And I'm like, what are you doing? Anyways, that's what this thing is behind me. I drank it last night. I've got to drink mine today. But anyways, so my point is for me and for you, it will be something different. Perhaps maybe you don't need something like that, but if you have a need and I know that like prices are high and all of that, but I could not put a price on my health because if I'm not able to physically be here and be in good working order, then my kids aren't going to be taken care of. You know, you're just, there's so much depending on us. Us moms are very important as well. For me, that's what self-care looks like is getting my shake from May, from, since May till now, I have taken the shake and it has changed my life and my body. So it's been a big game changer and it's really, really helped. I've lost 20 pounds. I still have like 30 more to go, but I at least like am having some progress, right? So that's one thing that I started doing and that's one thing that I give myself. We budget for it. We make sure that I have my shakes for you, that might just mean that you need, you know, their supplements. Our food is so depleted, I can't see anyone that really doesn't need some sort of supplement of something. So, you know, look into things if you're having issues. Maybe there is something that can help you that will help you to be better physically. Uh, sleep is highly important and we forget how important it is. And we have this thing called FOMO, fear of missing out. We get on our phone late at night. I know this from experience. And instead of like reading the Bible or another Bible over here, instead of reading the Bible or praying or doing something that's actually really um, great for us, we get on our phone and we look at Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and it's not really good for our physical health. Plus we're missing out on sleep. So don't be worried that you're going to miss out on something. I promise if it's important enough, you will find out. Make sure that you love yourself and you give yourself enough sleep each night. And yes, I know all about newborns and stuff. If you have to take naps during the day, this is just your reminder. Rest when you can. It's very important. It's very vital. If not, we're like hateful, not so kind mommies. Another thing, and this is on the physical side, is having dates with your spouse. That's important. And I put that under physical because it affects your like your mental status and your, you know, if you, if mom and dad are not strong in the relationship, everything else falls apart. Whether you have to have uh, parents watch kids or you have teenagers that you can pay or give an extra privilege or something to or we've even had times where we had no one to watch the kids and we would just like put the kids to bed early and like order McDonald's and sit on the bed here and watch a show together and just talk and be together. I mean, there's different ways to get things done, but that is very important to have time with your spouse and keep that relationship strong because it is a form of self-care. For me, I like to have my, I hate saying me time because it sounds so worldly, but I have to have in the morning where I have my coffee and I don't have people bothering me. And that to me is very important. So pick whatever is important to you. Some kind of alone time where you're not having a thousand kids yelling mom and all this stress and all this noise. Pick some kind of quiet time and just and give it to yourself. And it doesn't have to be an hour. It can be 15 minutes. So just make sure that you do that. Um, and the things that I enjoy doing for myself is like I told you coffee time in the morning. And at night, that's when I edit these videos. That's when I work on, I have a podcast that I do. Um, sometimes I listen to other podcasts or like I talk to my dad late at night. Usually we'll talk and we talk about all kinds of things that I normally could never talk about when I have kids going, mom, 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 mom. Plus I need to be a, mo a good mom and be present and be there for my kids, right? So I pick times for myself and it's when the kids are asleep. So there's another mommy self-care tip. Do things for yourself, but like pick a good time. Because if you want to do it like in the middle of the day when you know that everyone needs you, you're going to be greatly disappointed. And also don't give up because if you're getting into a schedule or something and that's new and you're going to implement something, it's going to be hard in the beginning. Do not give up. Okay. All right. Now to the spiritual side. We are a 
being that has a physical body and we also have a spiritual body, okay? And our spiritual body, oh my gosh, it's so important to recharge and refuel that. And I'm telling you, there's some things that I forgot and I started doing them again and I'm like, what? Why was I not listening to my casting crowns? Mercy me, these are just the things I like. Um, for king and country, things like that. I would turn that music on during the day when I'm in doing laundry and it even helps uplift the kids' moods. And I quit doing that for such a long time. Sorry, I had a knock at the door. This is, yeah, I'm doing this during the day. I'm not really going by my advice right now, but I had to get this video out. So it is what it is. At night is when I do my spiritual stuff and in the morning, okay? And of course, during the day, turn your music on. The kids can praise the Lord with you. It uplifts your spirits to hear words that are encouraging or Bible verses that have been turned into music. So those things help me a lot. Music is so healing to the soul. It can uplift. You can be in a terrible mood and turn on something, even just goofy music like, um, I don't know who sings it, but like that I'm happy song or just some kind of goofy, you know, like I really like the 80s music because that's when I was born. Something like that. It can be so helpful to our spiritual um, side of us, okay? And it's fun to dance too. That's also good for the physical, right? It's all connected there. Praying. It's like we forget. We need to pray more often. It's one thing that I have tried to devote to doing is talking to the Lord. And I used to be really good at it. And then what happened is, and here's kind of what I talked about earlier. I'd get on my phone and I would be so tired and I would literally fall asleep with the phone in my hand and I would forget to pray. So it's, I had another interruption. It's so important to stop letting the world like, hinder our relationship with God and our spouse and our family. And I'm sorry, but these phones, they're great. I've met so many people. I have, you know, an app on my phone called Marco Polo where I get to like face, it's, you know, kind of like FaceTime with other friends. And there's things like that that are really good. I would say, I'm going to be just really honest, like 10%, I think of the phone is like good. Okay. Cause there's so many amazing things we can do. But it literally seems like so many of us don't realize how much being on this phone can hinder our relationships and cause division and just it's it's just like you know your kids are looking at this instead of you what i have found is if i'm on it too much especially at night i don't pray like i used to i don't get into the word so that's another thing is cut out the things that cause hindrances it's in the bible it says cut off your hand if it causes you to steal he didn't mean physically let's go chop our hands off he spoke in parables he made things very spiritual what he means is if there's something that is causing harm you know, spiritually, physically, whatever, like cut those things out that are causing you to stumble. So that to me is very important. That's your little reminder. And I'm reminding myself as I talk, like cut out those things that take away what is actually important. And in the middle of that, husband just came home. So there's another interruption for you. That's another thing is like when we have these high expectations that something is going to go a certain way, quite often we're disappointed because we have these unrealistic expectations and I do it all of the time. And I think it's normal. We shouldn't like not, he's in the background. We're trying to remodel a bathroom in the middle of all of this too. Yeah, life's been crazy. Actually more than just a bathroom, but that's just one of the big things going on right now. So anyways, oh my gosh. So it's hard being a mom. It's hard taking time for yourself. And oh, what I was gonna also talk about is when you make a goal and you implement it, you know, give yourself like a reward. I'm not saying like, go in debt and use your credit card to go get a pedicure. But if you can swing it and like once a month or once every two months, you know, hey, if I do this, if I complete, you know, homeschool every day with my kids for so many weeks and we and we don't skip or whatever, my reward for myself is going to be I'm going to go get a manicure and I'm going to take all of the kids to the Dollar Tree and they get to pick out like a fun little item. I don't know. That's just some of the things that we have done in my family. We have work and then you earn something, right? So I don't think it's necessarily bad to implement that for your own self-care and how to run your family. Anyway, so the other part that's almost just as important as all of these others is the logistical part of it. And that's my tip. So basically, number one is schedule slash routine. Our family has a lot of things going on. I have teenagers that have their own social lives and different things they do. And it's really hard to keep everyone on a schedule. So I have a schedule that sometimes can be more of a routine. They kind of just depends on where we're at in life. But if you don't schedule these things, if you don't schedule where the kids are going to go to a bed so you can have peace at night and you just let them stay awake till they fall asleep till 11 or 12 at night, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be miserable. So putting up a boundary and doing things and sticking to your word 
is some of the best things of self-care. Okay, self-care is more than just sitting at a, you know, salon, as y'all know, and just having, you know, your nails done or whatever. There's so many things to our self. If we want our family, our home life to run well, then we have to take care of ourselves. We are like the soul of the house, of the home. And, you know, we literally can change the energy. I hate to sound new agey, but I'm saying like, if we're in a bad mood, it brings down the whole family. And I am like, today was one of those days, just being really real. I lost it. I let everything bother me and I like blew up. Okay, so today's a perfect example of I didn't get good sleep. I didn't pray recently. I'm just being very honest and real with you guys. And there's some good things that I did do and that I still keep up with, but I'm reminding myself, like, I need to do these other things if I want my home to run smoothly and not to have these moments where then later I'm going to feel guilty and feel like a bad mom because it blew up and blah, blah, blah. These things are so important to schedule. It's scheduling is not something that binds you and causes you to be um, under ball and chain. It's actually something that frees you to get more done. To me, that's really a good form of self-care and it's a good reminder to us that we need to do those things. So yeah, there's all these like physical things. Some people don't wear makeup and they're happy and they could care less. You know, sometimes when I put on my makeup at the beginning of the day, I literally accomplish more things because I physically feel better. So the physical part is such a huge part of our self-care. For instance, breakfast. Okay. My husband, he will feed everybody before himself and he'll be at the end of breakfast shaking and like barely able to eat himself. I don't do that. And I'm trying to teach him. I'm like, Steve, you're not being selfish by giving yourself the first omelet of the day. The kids will not die. They will be perfectly fine. Feed yourself first. So that's just one example. Sometimes self-care is being, I don't know if I would call it selfish, but just priorities, I guess. We have to be strong. We have to be physically and spiritually strong in order to raise all of these kids and to teach them about the Lord and so give yourself grace and buy a lot of paper plates when you need to and napkins and whatever you got to do sometimes just to get through it if you're able to. And another thing that would is really good that I'm working on right now is minimalism. I'm never going to be like the, you know, white house bed with nothing around it kind of mom. I like my decorations and we like our stuff, but I'm getting rid of things as well. That's another way of having self-care and loving yourself so you're not a slave to like laundry and cleaning 24-7 either. So it's this huge multifaceted thing is self-care. And I'm sorry that I jumped around, but I just wanted to speak from my heart. You are doing a good job. You can do it. Um, just keep praying. And if you mess up, literally start over. Just start over. God is the God of second chances. That was what he has done for us through his son, Jesus, to free us all from all of our mistakes and let us start all over again. And as a family, we do that a lot too. Um, sometimes we'll have a bad day and I'm like, okay, everyone get in your beds. I'm going to like, we're going to pretend that it's the morning and we're going to restart all of this and everyone's going to have a better attitude. I've done that before too. And it works. So yeah. All right. Well, I've babbled on long enough. Those are my tips, my tricks, my self care things, um, that I suggest for you as a mom to remember to do or to implement. And again, don't give up. Uh, God loves you. I love you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.